Hi, I'm Loretta Rose with Street Talk, and I'm on location today in Columbus, Georgia, because it is Phoenix City Mayor's Ball, their ninth annual gala. It is an education and charity ball that is taking place. We are here to highlight this wonderful, magnificent event with Phoenix City Mayor's Ball. It is phenomenal. It is amazing. You're going to see Hollywood in the South. Yes, you're going to see that take place here at the Columbus Convention and Trade Center. This year's special guest is amazing. She is phenomenal. The one and only. Yes, the incomparable Vivica A. Fox is the special guest. You don't want to miss it. We're going to take you inside as we begin to see what is happening here. And you don't want to miss it. This is for a great cause. And it is totally extravagant. I'm Loretta Rose with Street Talk, highlighting Phoenix City Mayor's Ball here in Columbus, Georgia. Let's go inside. side of this wonderful gala, Phoenix City Mayor's Ball, and we caught up with Phoenix City Outstanding Team and Miss Phoenix City. So I heard it is your first time coming to a Mayor's Ball, Phoenix City Mayor's Ball. So how exciting is that? It is really cool. It's been a really neat experience so far, and I'm really excited for all the festivities. All right, tell us your name. My name is Sarah Elizabeth Ellison. Oh. My name is Madeline Rigdon. Okay, so what are you ladies are most excited about? Just tonight, it's just such a glamorous event and it has such a, a, a well cause. Um, yes. I love just being able to give back to the community and see it. People come here tonight and all the money that they spent just to be here together and it just impacts so many people in such a wonderful way. Absolutely, and you ladies do a great job with impacting the lives of others as well. Thank so you. So what are you most excited about? I'm just most excited for being able to celebrate these children and their wonderful opportunity that the mayor and this committee has provided, as well as their hard work for being able to take that next step in their life and that the fact that we're able to provide those scholarships for them, it's a wonderful cause. 
Wow. Well, you ladies represent Phoenix City, Alabama well. So thank you so much. This is what's happening here at Phoenix City's Mayor's Ball. We're in Columbus, Georgia at the Columbus Convention and Trade Center. Stick around. We'll be back. We have just caught up with Mr. Leroy Davis, who is also here to support this wonderful occasion, and he's all about supporting young people in the community. I know you want to give congratulations to Phoenix City and their Mayor's Ball Committee for this wonderful, elegant occasion. Oh yes, we, we want to uh, thank the Mayor and congratulate him for what he's doing. Uh, you know, I represent the Wiregrass for Russell County. And I also have the Veteran View Show. Absolutely. So uh, the Wiregrass uh, helped support it, the Mayor's Golf Tournament. Oh. So we want to make sure that we he continues to have money to mm. give our scholarships to our wow. kids. And we want to make sure that we give a shout out to Russell County High School so those students can start applying for some of those scholarships awesome. as well. Awesome. So he's doing a great job in the community and Absolutely. we want to keep it going. See, and this helps the community to see all the moving parts to make this type of occasion happen and the blessing that it is to the young people in the community. I'm so glad you share that because the community may not know that. Well, they, they need to know that, hey, just because of COVID, we're not stopping. We're going to continue Absolutely. to do those things that we have within our control. Oh, and yes. to help support the golf tournament, the Wiregrass started with more because, you know, I'm on the board of directors and we're going to make sure yes. that we keep money coming in to support our Absolutely. students. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Mr. Davis, who is also Veterans View, which is with Beam Network as well. We want to thank Phoenix City Mayor's Ball and say congratulations to Mayor Eddie Lowe and Lady Deborah Lowe for this wonderful, wonderful scholarship ball. You're watching here on Beam TV. And we just caught up with attorney Nick Jackson, who is also a committee member. And if you've been watching Beam TV, you have seen him. And I must add, he looked magnificent. Yes. So thank you. this is wonderful. We want to say kudos to you all. Well, thank you so much, Soretta. We're you know incredibly grateful for your support. You've been so supportive throughout this entire process and throughout the years as well. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I know you're excited about tonight. Um, got many, many recipients, students that will yeah. be blessed on tonight. And I know you want to thank your sponsors in general. I know it's many of them, but I know you all are so appreciative yes. for every sponsor. Yeah, you know, tonight is a culmination of a lot of hard work for a lot of people. Um, everyone that has sponsored this incredible event is, you know, investing directly into our community. Uh, these are people that come back to our community and, you know, have high paying jobs, are educated and will continue to, you know, uh, and do this into perpetuity for this area. Um, it's an incredible event. We're so thankful to have so many great sponsors that have you know, enabled us to bring this all together. Yes. So thank you so much. Wow, we appreciate you so much. And thank this you. is awesome. Thank you all, Phoenix City Mayor's Ball and the committee members for allowing us to come in and share this with the community. We're having a great time here at Phoenix City's Mayor's Ball, and we're going to start making our way inside. I want to let you know, tonight is going to be a night of entertainment, all for a great cause. It's going to be fine dining. It's going to be live music. It's going to be red carpet, as you see, everyone that comes through. You're going to see students being blessed, and I love it how the community came together collectively to support this Mayor's Ball. Also, I I've got to mention the host is the incomparable actor Palmer William Jr. He will be hosting and also his sidekick tonight will be another host. We have Dave Arwood who is a radio personality with PMB Broadcasting. So they're going to tag team tonight and host this wonderful occasion. You all don't want to miss it. We're going to take you inside and you're actually going to see the entire event on Beam Cable Television Network. And might I add, the special guest, wow, is The Fox, Vivica A. Fox. You got to stick around. We're going to take you inside. You're watching here on Beam TV. This is Phoenix City Mayor's Ball. We're located here in Columbus, Georgia, on location at Columbus Convention and Trade Center. And now we have caught up with Russell County District Judge, Judge 
Zach Collins, who is also a blessing to the community. And I know tonight, Judge, this is dear to your heart as well because you believe in paying it forward in young lives. Absolutely. Uh, first of all, congratulations to Mayor Lowe and his wife, uh, Mrs. Lowe, for the ninth annual Mayor's Ball. I mean, this is this this thing is growing. It's continuing yes. to grow. I just went inside. It's this big in there. So uh, it's, it's just such a great opportunity to be able to raise money, give back. Uh, and as a juvenile court judge, I see a lot of young folks that need help. And being able to help them to go to college uh, is, is what we're here to do to here to serve to give back and make sure we can you know give give back to the young folks uh, so that they can uh, be leaders you know when we need them you absolutely. know absolutely so that, yeah that is Mayor Eddie Lowe saying he, he literally preached that yeah, <laughs> with yeah. his platform as well we yeah. want to thank you because you are such a blessing in the community as thank well thank you I appreciate that we yeah. appreciate you thanks yeah, again for we sure. appreciate everything you do too as well Ab good to see you thank you it is my honor yeah. congratulations Phoenix City and Mayor Eddie Lowe and Lady Lowe this is just too much fun. I am having a great time at Phoenix City's Mayor's Ball, this extravagant ball. It is education in a charity ball. We have caught up with one of the hosts, the one and only Dave Arwood with PMB Broadcasting. Yay! Yes, Dave! Oh my goodness. I am so excited to be here when the mayor called and said, hey Dave, I'd love for you to come to the Mayor's Ball. I was like, that's awesome. And then he asked, I'd also love for you to co-MC it. Wow. What an honor for the mayor to ask me to do that. And still haven't quite figured out uh, exactly uh, what awesomeness I might have done to make that happen wow. because that's a pretty cool thing when the mayor yes. asks you to MC. So, Absolutely. So excited. But you know what? I want to thank everybody who has made this not only happen, but everyone who has given yes. to help out with the mayor's, the mayor's ball and, and all of the charity uh, portion of this event is so important to help our young folks right here Absolutely. in the Phoenix City and Russell County Absolutely. area. So, you know, shout out to everybody who yes. has given to this and uh, so glad to be here tonight and Absolutely. so glad to see you tonight. You Absolutely. look fantastic. You, look at you. Hey, it's not often I get to look like this. I even asked, look. would it be okay if I wore Bermuda shorts and flip flops? And they were like, no, that's not a good idea. And let me tell you, he's <laughs> one of our hometown celebrities right. as well. He is a radio personality. So, Dave, I know you're going to rock it. That's right. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you so much how, for talking to me. Let me ask okay. you, how exciting is it, is it to be tag teaming with Palmer Williams Jr.? Well, whew, I tell you, that's a big one right that's there because one, yeah. I'm thinking, you know, I, I, I was thinking what to call him, sir? No, I think I'm just going to stick with Palmer, but man, I'll tell you what, any Palma, Vivek, I just saw her walk by here earlier, so I'm excited. I'm just excited to be on stage with Palmer, everybody, yes. and, and to be on stage with a, a an even bigger star that would yeah. be uh, Mayor Eddie Lowe and yes. and the First Lady. Ooh, so so excited to be here. So all right, it's a great event. I'm so happy to be a part of it. So. Awesome. awesome. Well, this is what's happening here, and we want to thank you thank again you. for sharing with the viewers here on Beam TV. There are so many beauty queens here, <laughs> but we have Miss Alabama. We just caught up with. Tell us your first line. Hi, I'm Lauren Bradford. I'm so excited to be here tonight. Thank you so much for having me. This is an incredible event. I mean, yes. it's just so incredible to see all the people come out and support the cause of scholarships for our youth. Mm. And I just have to say congratulations to oh. everyone who is receiving a scholarship. That's why I wanted to get involved in the Miss Alabama organization in the first place. It's all about scholarships. And this year, I have won scholarships to afford my master's degree. So oh, I believe wow. in the power of scholarships. Yes. I think it's life changing. It's empowering. So I'm so excited to be here. Oh, we just need you to speak. Too. I mean, she just said it all. You are, and you are absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. That's you. I need to borrow this dress. Like, heck yes. Thank y'all so much. Oh, wow. Well, so help us to know your platform. Yeah. So I advocate uh, for a cause called Unplug the Digital Diet Plan. I created when I was 15 years old, so about seven years ago. And it, it educates people of all ages how to use technology in a healthy way. Because technology is all around us and, and it shouldn't control us. We should be controlling it. So absolutely. talking about balance with that. So I've loved sharing that message across the state of Alabama. Wow. We're actually crowning the next Miss Alabama one week from tonight. Oh, so this wow. is my last official event oh. as Miss Alabama. So I'm so excited to spend it here in Phoenix City. And this is your first time coming to a Phoenix City's Mayor's Ball. Yes, yes it is. And I am just blown away yeah. at the support, at the people. I love seeing all of the beautiful dresses and yes. the support just of, of truly rallying behind scholarships. Wow, so. wow. Well, thank you so much, Miss Alabama, for sharing with us, thank representing you. Phoenix City in the state of Alabama. <laughs> this is what's happening at Phoenix City's Mayor's Ball. 
and now we have caught up with attorney Graham, who is also here at Phoenix City Mayor's Ball, and he is a great support to the community as well. I know it is a joy to be here. Tell the community why it's so important for you to be here. Well, the scholarships that they give out to the children, they need it. College expenses are going up and up, and any dollar they can find helps them and their family. Absolutely. And uh, it, it's just, it feels good to donate to the to the cause and, and be here and just support it in every way you can. Absolutely, this is phenomenal. And we just want to thank you for your support as well. And you a parent, yes, so you understand when children go into college, exactly. every bit helps. I have uh, two, as you know. One is finished and one is in college. So any dollar they can get helps them tremendously. Awesome. Well, this is what's happening in Phoenix City. And thank you because you represent Phoenix City, Alabama, well as... Well, thank you for having me. Thank you. This is what's happening at Phoenix City Mayor's Ball. It is an education and charity ball. You're watching on Bean TV. Now we have caught up with Russell County DA, Rick Chancy, who also serve in the community of Phoenix City and Russell County, and he served young people in the community. So I know tonight is a joy to be able to see how the community has come together collectively to bless young people in the community and district you serve. You're so sweet. Soon to be DA, Rick Chancy, but, you know, I got a preview you of the video. You do all the job, you know, it seems like. <laughs> it seems like it. Uh, I, I got a chance to preview the uh, video we'll see tonight of the kids that have been awarded these scholarships. I'm so proud of Mayor and uh, what he's done with this uh, ball and the money and the fundraisers that goes on because that's what it's about. You know, the kids in our community, some of them are getting chances they're not, they wouldn't have otherwise had because of this. And everybody gets to come out and have a good time. Yeah. What better to have a good time for the kids? Absolutely. Awesome. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate you and we appreciate your service. And I know Mayor Eddie Lowe and First Lady Lowe appreciate, yes. you know, your support as well. Absolutely. It's a joy to see. Well, awesome. thank you again. Thank you. This is what's happening at Phoenix City Mayor's Ball. We are located tonight in Columbus, Georgia at the Columbus Convention and Trade Center. As I promised, we're about to get ready to enter into the ballroom. And as you can see, we have our special guest, Vivica A. Fox. She's about to make her grand introduction. Isn't she lovely? She is so amazing. Very kind, generous, loving, and has taken a lot of time with the guests here. So we're going to take you inside. Congratulations to Phoenix City on their ninth annual Phoenix City Mayor's Ball. I think this is the part where we walk across the stage. Right here, right here. Yeah, right here. Where we come across the stage, right here. All right. Good evening, everybody. How y'all feeling? What's up? And hey, don't everybody answer that I one mean, time. Real. It's crazy. Good gracious. Are y'all all right? I'm going to take this side of the room. Hey, what's up? What about this side over here? How y'all feeling? Uh oh. I think we got a little competition going on. I mean, for real. I don't know. That's pretty cool, though. Even though this is kind of like the extended side of the room. It's a beautiful thing. But why don't you introduce to, to the people who you are? Well, first of all, dapper in your suit and everything. You like that? You like that? That's da tuxedo. Dave Arwood from PMB Broadcasting. We got uh, 11 radio that's, stations. That's when you clap right there when he says his name. Right Dave there. Arwood, PMB Broadcasting. A lot of people hear me on the radio. I'm on Q1073, Kissing 99.3, and man, a whole bunch of other ones locally. So now, I understand glad to be here. Got like 11 different stations it's that you're crazy. in charge of, right? It's crazy. It's crazy. We run so a whole bunch of them. I just got one thing to say. Let me hold some. <laughs> Here's his phone. We got an email coming any minute now, a text message or something. I know that's right, as long as it's from Vimo. Right. Anyway, this is this side of the room right here. My name is Palmer Williams Jr. You may have seen me somewhere here in Columbus at some point or a time, but I just am so excited about being here once again. We are back outside. Yes. Can you believe it? I think 2019 was the last time we did this. I believe so. Yeah. And they act like, like they're not excited about being outside. I know you can't say it right now, but you were sick of the people that you was at home with. That's right. Stop playing. That's right. That's right. Just keep looking at me. Don't look at them. Don't look at them. I saw you. I saw you looking straight ahead. Mm -hmm. yeah. I brought him out here. 
<laughs> Not tonight. That'll be on the radio tomorrow. That's right. Don't give me any ideas. You know what? We got some special guests that are going to be coming in, and I think we need to kind of introduce them. You want to try to do the honors there for me? I think we can do that. Let's see. We got, uh, first off, we have Miss Alabama, Miss Phoenix City, and also Miss Phoenix City's outstanding team that are coming in tonight. Right on cue. Please do the pageant wave. You got to do the wave. There it is. Everybody's looking fantastic. I know, right? How many people right now, by a show of hands, how many people just got your outfit on off of layaway? Anyone? Anybody? Just, just us, they, Yeah, just me. Just us? I don't know. You know, it's a beautiful thing, though. You've had it on layaway since 2019. I'm just glad my wife's got a sewing kit in her purse back there. We're good. I know, that's right. Because I know I have grown since last time I wore this suit. Right now, this button can put your eye out if I breathe out. <laughs> Like I said, we got a sewing kit over here if you need it. I appreciate you and your wife. I know that's right. Always being prepared. Was your mom, was your, was your wife a Girl Scout or anything? I don't know. She's probably done everything over Where there. Is she? Wave your hand in the air. Wave it like she you care. Y'all give that sweet woman a round of applause right there. Oh, that's right. Love her. Tanya Harwood. Is that something? It says Tanya Harwood. Tanya Harwood. I was hoping she had the last name of yours. That would make sense. All right. I'm not, I'm not gonna mess with you though, Jay. Yeah, <laughs> well, come on over to the podium. Don't I was tested. I'm, I'm negative. Well, I okay, right. good. Good Lord. I, hey, I didn't know. You're still on COVID protocol, yeah, ain't my, you? My arm is still sore from this. I know that's right. I got the booster smoothie Pizza. last time I was up. I ain't, I ain't having no problems with that. Hit one of those drip bars and make sure I'm. Shit. Excuse me. I'm so sorry. So sorry. But anyway, at this time we're gonna have our occasion. They don't look at me in that tone. It's all, it's all, all good. Right. All right, right now we would like to welcome Miss Annie Lindsay, committee member. Please put your hands together Annie. for Miss Annie. Where are you, Miss Annie? Now, this is another thing I have to teach you okay. also. Okay. You know, when they get ready to come up, especially the young ladies, we got to run to the side there and they help them up the steps. Okay, got it. One, two, three. We got this. All right. Here we go. All right. Miss Annie. How you doing? You're looking lovely. Man, look how wonderful she looks tonight. I know, right? Look at there. Don't awesome. Bad self. Here comes your extra mic because we're going to be COVID compliant. Y'all give this lady a round of applause right here. Awesome. Lord, I didn't touch the mic. The heart of a rose is like the purest of friendship. The heart of this rose is you. My best friend and purest friendship because you are here. Tonight, how can we smile without I? How can we be fine without I? How can we wish without I? How can we be a friend without I? I am important, but I tonight would never achieve success without you. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. On behalf of Mayor Lowe, First Lady, and the committee members, we welcome you here tonight. We would like to thank you for your continuous commitment support of Mayor Lowe's vision to give back to the community, nonprofit organizations, and dual enrollment. We would like to welcome all of our special guests, all of our elected and appointed officials, our guest speaker, and all of our special roses. That's you. This is a night of celebration. And it is because of you. And we are grateful for all of you and for who you are. Remember, the red rose represents love. Don't forget, we love you. The white rose represents friendship. And don't forget, we are the best of friends. Again, welcome and enjoy. Awesome. Thank you so much.
Thank you one, for, one more time for Ms. Annie Lindsay, one of the committee members. You know, speaking of, you speaking know what of we forgot to do? What? We forgot to help her down the steps. Oh, God, these new people. I'll get better anyway, at this. I'll get right, better, I promise. It's all right. Just, you know, I'm actually keep wearing keep my Nike Air shoes on this. Yeah, your wife is cutting her eyes at you, too. It's just, uh, just don't look over there. Don't look over there, Dave. Yeah, good. All right. All right. Hey, you know what we also need to do is welcome in some more special guests. Take it away. Shall we please put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen, for the mayor of the city of Phoenix City and first lady, Mr. and Mrs. Eddie Lowe. Come on now, they're the reason why we're here today. I know, let's get loud and proud. Yeah. Mayor Lowe in the house. If you don't do nothing else, give it up for the dress. Well, that's going to look good going across the dance floor tonight right there. And last but certainly not least, this young lady, which I just found out we were born in the same year, and also a Leo, please put your hands together for a TV and movie star, Miss Vivica Fox. Yeah! Miss Vivica A. Fox. She's got the parade wave also. I love it. She's got the pageant wave too. Escorted by Muskogee County's finest. She got, she got the folks around her like, I wish you would try to jump at her. Right? right? Doesn't she look lovely in her lavender? Absolutely gorgeous. Did y'all take a selfie so you can tell you wise where you were tonight? <laughs> just, just making sure. They're like, I hope people took pictures of us on the way in. And they were trying to look serious. Yeah. They were like, serious. Seriously standing close. Just this tight face. That's all right, though. Give it up one more time for our guests, uh, the people of honor. Uh, we have another young lady that's coming up here to the stage right now for our occasion. Mrs. Yolanda Daniel, committee chairman. Please welcome Ms. Daniel. I'm trying to figure out which side to run to. Right up there. No, she already up here. She snuck in on us. So fast. Hello. Welcome to this event tonight. On behalf of the Honorable Mayor Eddie Lowe, First Lady Deborah Lowe, and the entire Mayor's Law Committee, I want to say thank you for your support of this ninth annual Phoenix City Mayor Education and Charity Ball. The Mayor's Education and Charity Ball was the brainchild of Mayor Eddie Lowe and Ms. Deborah Lowe. This event raises funds that are utilized to provide financial assistance to students pursuing a higher education, and also many grants are awarded to vital non-community, non-profit organizations. In addition, we also provide high school students with dual enrollments to Chattahoochee Community College so that they can pursue college credits prior to going to college. The first Mayor's Education and Charity Ball was held in 2014, and since that time, this event has raised over $700,000.
Nice one. Now, if she slips, it's on you. I got this one over here. All right. Okay. Hurry back, Dave. Come on. Uh, my bad. On, I was doing my job. I feel like I'm doing hosting training. You're, you're, you're doing right. a great job, too. Can Appreciate we get a round of applause for Palmer up here? <laughs> Y'all give it up for Super Dave. That's your new name. I like it. All right. Once again, Miss Yolanda Daniel, committee chairperson, give it up for her once again. You don't understand how important these scholarships are and everything. Anybody here have college students right now? Yeah, yeah, you're not very excited about it. Just, yeah, you know, whatever, yeah. Yeah, believe, believe me, my daughter and my wallet is at FAMU right now. <laughs> and the other half of my wallet is at Georgia State, so. Instead of me telling you, let me hold something, yeah. Mayor. Let me hold something. Just a bit. Ooh, wee, it hurts. God bless your heart and all your parts for doing this. Thank you so much. All right. At this time, we're going to have our invocation. Oh, I'm sorry, we got to get serious. Yeah, get serious. And now for the invocation from the Greater Mount Zion Missionary Church. Please welcome to the stage, Reverend Noble D. Williams. We got to get you on the radio. Wait a minute. Can we go help him? Oh, for a minute, I thought he was going to be here by way of the Holy Ghost. I didn't know. There's there he is. Come on, cuz. Y'all get up Pastor Williams one more time. Come on, Pastor Williams. Amen. You know how they say, man to God. Bless your brother. Amen. You gave up your mic, Dave. I'm sorry, Pastor. That, that one's for you right there. I'm just saying. Because, you know, if we give you a Palmer loose sneezed mic, on this one. Yeah, if, if we give you a loose mic, we'll be here all night. I'm sorry. <laughs> He just leaned on it. We're we in for it. I know, right? Let's just pray. <laughs> Father, we thank you tonight for this gathering and allowing us to come together once again. Truly, we are your witnesses that you are God. And Father, tonight we magnify you, we adore you, and we glorify you. We do thank you tonight for our mayor and first lady. Thank you, dear God, for the vision that they've had, one of compassion and love. Lord, we thank you now. They've made the vision plainly, they've written it down. And we that have read it, we've run with it, and we're sowing into it. Lord, that it will transform the lives of your greatest kids, and that's our children. Father, we bless you tonight. For all of those who are in attendance and sown and Father, I pray that they'll reap 100-fold. Father, in all things, you get the glory, you get the honor, and you get the praise. And it's in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus our Christ. Amen. Amen. One more time for Pastor Williams. Give it us. Now, it says here you're from Zion Missionary Church. That was a Presbyterian prayer. Thank you so much. It was very, very brief. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Cash out our love offering. <laughs> it's a different world now, ain't it, boy? <laughs> you're, you're offering by cash out. <laughs> Pastor gonna hit you back, but you know I gotta take 3% out of that, so you're gonna, on the next offering, it's gonna be 6%. I'm telling you, this gas price is so high, I asked my pastor, could I pay 8%, because I need 2% for gas. <laughs> In Jesus' name. Go ahead, brother. Let's see here. We got uh, Miss Lauren Bradford, Miss Alabama, Miss Madeline Rigdon, Miss Phoenix City, and Miss Sarah Elizabeth Ellison, Miss Phoenix City's Outstanding Teen. Please welcome. Please, oh, please we got, welcome. Oh, we got double hey, duty now. I can, on, really got this one. Come on, Dave. You're doing great, Dave. I'm so proud of you. Miss Alabama. Miss Alabama. Miss oh. Phoenix City. Awesome. Miss Phoenix City's. Outstanding. Look at there. Hey everyone, thank y'all so, so much for having us tonight. We are so excited to be here. We're all going to share a tidbit of our stories and how we're so grateful. But I just wanted to share a quick bit about why I believe scholarships are so important and why a night like tonight is so important. If you would have told me 
whenever I was 15 years old that I would be sitting on this stage speaking to you as Miss Alabama, I would have laughed in your face because I grew up as a complete tomboy. And by tomboy, I mean I skateboarded every day after school. I was addicted to Mountain Dew. I drank three cans a day. And I was an ROTC. Yes, I was an ROTC. And so I never, ever thought I would do something like compete in a pageant or something like this. But I found out that the Miss Alabama's Outstanding Teen Program, which is the little sister to Miss Alabama, was about scholarships. And I knew that I wanted to go to Auburn, or Eagle, hope that's not too controversial. I know I represent all oh, now. Jesus. I know, I know, I'm sorry Let's guys. Go. Or sorry. Eagle. Thank, thank you. But I knew I wanted to go to Auburn, and I knew that college was expensive, like we all know that, and so I knew I wanted to be able to contribute to my own scholarship and my own college one day. And so I started competing, and this year, throughout my time competing, I, uh, or first of all, this year as Miss Alabama, throughout my time competing, I served as Miss Alabama, and then I got to go to Miss America, and I was so honored to walk away as first runner-up to our Miss America 2022, and so thank you so much. But I am so glad, so, so glad to be back here in my home state of Alabama. I'm a little biased, but I think it's the best state to come home to. But with that, I was able to walk away from this year with $60,000 in cash scholarships. Thank you so much. And just to share a fun story, when I was on the stage of Miss America competing for that, I got to interview in front of a panel of judges, in front of millions of viewers in an arena of people and talk about my ambitions and talk about my goals and talk about scholarships. And when I got back from Miss America, about three days after I got back, I got an email from Vanderbilt. And so I'm pursuing a master's degree at Vanderbilt, a master's in finance. I would love to enter uh, the world of finance and global markets and, and be a woman in a male-dominated field. And so I'm excited about that. But I, thank you. <laughs> and so I got an email from Vanderbilt from my admissions committee and the dean of the business school. And they said, Lauren, we are so impressed with the Miss America organization and what you truly stand for, and that's scholarships, that we are offering you a $20,000 scholarship. And so, thank you so much. And I just wanted to share that story, first of all, to share about God's sovereignty, because I believe that that is from the Lord, first and foremost. But second of all, to share that I will pay $0 for my master's degree at Vanderbilt University. And that is such a gift. And my takeaways from this, is I feel empowered. As a young person, as a 22-year-old young woman entering this big wide world, I feel so empowered that I was able to contribute to the entirety of the funds of my master's degree. And I'm a product of what happens when you give a young person scholarships. I'm a product of that, and I believe, and something that I have advocated for as Miss Alabama this year, is what it means for young people to stand up and be countercultural and to do hard things. Because I think that we can all agree that sometimes we live in a world where young people are afraid to stand up against the current of the ties of what everyone else is doing. But I think that when you empower a young person and recognize them with things like scholarships, with awards for academic achievement, you give them an opportunity to see what lies ahead of them, to see a bigger path for their lives. And so as a product of that, of scholarships completely changing my life, and empowering me to step into my future. I just want to encourage you to soak in tonight to really know that it does change lives. I want to congratulate every scholarship recipient and congratulate all of you in being a part of something truly life-changing. So thank you so much. Good evening. <laughs> my name is Madeline Rankin. I'm Miss Phoenix City 2022. And I just want to say what a blessing it is to be here tonight. Since I won in December, Phoenix City has been the most welcoming and loving community that I have ever been a part of, and I just want to thank y'all for that. I've truly never met a society that is so charitable and giving. I just want to say thank you for being here tonight to celebrate such achievement in academic and to celebrate our students and just encouraging them to move on and to go for their dreams and aspirations. Thank you so much for your generosity, and I just hope you continue to go forward in the future with it. Thank you. Well, hey, y'all. I'm Sarah Elizabeth Ellison. I'm Miss Phoenix City's Outstanding Teen. And wow, it has been so 
such an honor to be able to represent Phoenix City so far this year. I actually live in Phoenix City, so beyond it just being my hometown, this committee and this scholarship fund is something that makes it such an honor to represent this area. It's amazing what these scholarships can do for children, as well as just encouraging those to go after their dreams and their aspirations in college. I'm an upcoming senior at Central High School, so I'll be able to apply for this scholarship actually within the next year. And, and knowing that this is out there just makes me encourage myself to be able to go to college and to want to chase my dreams. I'm the youngest of three children, so there's already been two colleges funded. So of course this is something that just lightens the burden. Any scholarship money lightens the burden on anyone that wants to go after a college degree and beyond. And I would just encourage you to keep donating and keep investing in these children because children are the future and you're investing in your future by investing in the scholarship. Thank y'all for being here tonight. Can you please give these ladies a round of applause. Y'all give it up for the John Bill Collective one more time. Oh, they sounded better than that. Come on now. Put your pie down for a second and, and clap your hands. I want to dedicate a song to the Honorable Mayor and First Lady of Phoenix City, Alabama. To the young lady, Miss Alabama, God bless your heart and all your parts. You're going to Auburn, but um, roll tide. Anyway, um, but actually, my great niece just graduated from the School of Veterinary Science at Auburn University, so I'm not all that upset with Auburn. So, give my niece, Dr. India Woods, at 25 years old, a veterinary doctor in our family. So. And she is a product of a lot of scholarships and cash apps, direct deposit, demo. Uncle Palmer, can I have $150? Because there's this sorority party. You know? I mean, I need it for food. So that's what she was doing. But we're going to try to do this one. So what in the world is you? Is this like my theme music? Oh, God, you want to do that right here? Oh, Lord, wait a minute. I'm gonna need my phone right there. Anybody know this song? Cause I show it on. Put your hands together at one time. I gotta Google the words right quick. Y'all good? Oh Lord.
2014 happened to be the year that this foundation initiated and being a part of the 2014 graduating class I was able to further my education and pursue a degree in music which is my passion with supplemental support from this scholarship foundation. The Mayor's Ball Scholarship took a lot of pressure off of me um, in terms of um, having to pay financially uh, for college. I was able to take some classes in high school um, that eventually uh, helped me graduate college early um, and not have to worry about paying for it really helped me out uh, big time. I would say that this scholarship helped me adventure out into a new career style, I would say. You know, I didn't know too much about engineering until I went to college. I would say that this scholarship does help build our future community up with teachers, educators, architects, nurses, healthcare, engineers, and beyond so many things. You know, this scholarship can be the first scholarship for someone to really want to go to school and be successful, honestly. I do think that um, the Mayor's Scholarship has greatly benefited me. Um, it's wonderful to see our community come together and um, all donate to help such to, uh, such a great cause and help people, you know, give, it, give a chance to people who might not have had that opportunity to further their education. And I'm so grateful for everybody who's donated, for Mayor Lowe for coming up with this. It helped as far as with dual enrollment for school, so I was able to exempt out of the core classes that you take whenever you go to college as a freshman. And that helps as long as whenever you go to school as a freshman, you take the classes like English and history and things of that nature. Um, but you also pay for those classes that 
you may not need as far as with your degree, but you have to take it because it is foundational. So I was able to exempt out of that and take it in high school. My love for the community, I came back as soon as I could. And now that I'm working as a nurse within the Columbus area and Phoenix City area, I love it. I can't imagine going anywhere else just because this is my hometown. This is where I grew up. This is where people poured into me. Um, and the Marist Scholarship was one that poured into me and it helped me to provide for my community the best way that I could. God has provided and opened many doors through this scholarship. Each step along the way, He has been faithful, and being a recipient of this scholarship is just another example of that faithfulness. The Phoenix City Mayor's Ball Scholarship allowed me to graduate with my bachelor's degree in accounting from Auburn University at Montgomery entirely debt-free. It is through education that we are able to better our community, our world, and ourselves. It takes great dedication and commitment and courage and focus to achieve a degree in higher education. It also takes support from our family, our friends, our professors, and scholarships. The financial assistance provided by this scholarship will allow students to focus solely on their academic responsibilities, ultimately reducing the financial burden of college expenses. We say all the time, and it's even evident in song, that children are the future. And if we want to better the community, we have to start by bettering the children of tomorrow. I want to encourage you to donate to this great foundation and your continuous support is much appreciated. These scholarships provide support for generations of outstanding and deserving students. It starts everybody off on a, on a good foot um, and really just ultimately pivots them in a way that, that not many things in the community can. Um, so we're able to start, start fresh, start early, um, and not have to worry so much about student debt and student loans and really start our careers off on the right foot. So if you are in high school right now, I really encourage you to apply for all scholarships, especially the Phoenix City Mayor's Ball Scholarship. Um, it's a wonderful cause. It helped me out so much, um, you know, just going through further in education in many, many ways that you don't realize until you're in that in those shoes walking into college and it helped. It's a wonderful cause, so don't, you know, never give up. Always apply for scholarships, do your best, try your hardest. I cannot give thanks enough to Mayor Lowe and Mrs. Lowe for the opportunity that they gave me with the scholarship. It allowed me to pursue my passion to be a nurse and further my education. It kind of sparked the fire, to say the least, because it helped me to get my bachelor's degree, and now I'm moving on into my master's degree. Um, but without the help of that scholarship, I wouldn't have been able to at least start it off and, and be able to give back to my community the way that I have been. Um, and I can't wait to further my education so that I can continue being um, a seed for my community and watering into the other people that are in high school now and letting them know to apply for the scholarship, um, go to school and get your education because it helps with furthering their ability in life and able to give back to their community. And also for the rest of the community, it's important that you give back um, and give to the scholarships. It does make a difference. It makes a difference in everyone's life and lets them know that you can and, and you are able to pursue higher education with the help of your community and with the help of scholarships like this one. So make sure you give back and thank you Mayor Lowe and Mrs. Lowe. I uh, just want to thank you uh, Mayor Eddie Lowe and um, your wife Miss Lowe. Uh, Y'all have meant the world to me and everything that you guys have done for me has went a long way um, and hopefully I can serve our community as, as well as you guys have. Um, so super excited donors continue to donate. Um, it, it helps people like me really start off on the right foot um, for our, our hopefully successful careers. I just want to say thank you so much to Mayor Lowe and Miss Lowe and all the wonderful um, sponsors of this event and everybody who helps pull everything together to make this cause wonderful and to be, be able to give back to our community. It's a wonderful thing. Thank you to all the donors. Um, you are all awesome and wonderful. Please, you know, if you have the opportunities to keep donating or if you would like to just do your time, anything would be great. So thank you so much to Mayor Lowe, Miss Lowe, and all the Lowe family and all the sponsors and donators out there. We really appreciate you. Because of their investment in me and the students of Phoenix City, I will continue to excel in my academics and my future career in accounting. Thank you for investing in Phoenix City and its students. May God bless you for being a blessing to others whom you may never meet but will leave an indelible mark upon their lives.
Excellent. Yes. I'd like to ask uh, Mr. Ethan Calhoun to come to the stage, please. Mr. Ethan Calhoun. As well as Ms. Bria Hindi Hardy. Hardy. Bria Hardy. Yes. Some bifocals. Ethan's like, am I supposed to go to the stage? We would have helped you up, but you know, you're like a guy. Yeah, I think you got this. Here's our future nurse. Oh, excuse me. You're what? Oh, you are a current registered nurse. She come on me. Yeah. <laughs> she almost did the hand thing. Like, I'm a current nurse. Don't get it twisted. Amen. I witnessed that. You go. <laughs> awesome. All righty. Good evening, everyone. Everyone looks absolutely stunning tonight. Thank you. <laughs> First, I would like to start off by saying thank you to everyone that has shown up tonight. Your presence shows that your support and the educational growth of the youth within the community is truly making a change. By the donations of others, I was awarded the Mayor's Ball Scholarship in 2016. The scholarship enabled me to take dual enrollment classes while in high school. For those who may not know, dual enrollment classes enables high school students to take classes and get college credits. That was a huge push towards my academic success in higher education. Because of the Mayor's Scholarship, I was able to walk on the Troy University's campus my freshman year with the academic classification of a sophomore. In 2020, I graduated with my Bachelor's of Science in Nursing and specialized as a registered nurse in the Neonatal Intensive Care Unit and OBGYN. And I'm currently pursuing my Master's in Nursing at the University of Alabama. <laughs> yes, roll tide in Nurse Administration. If it's one thing that I learned while growing up in the Phoenix City School System, is that you can never dream too high. You just have to put in the work to achieve it. The Mayor's Ball Scholarship was the first step in me pursuing my dreams. I'm a living testimony that it shows how the Phoenix City School Systems is building successful young adults. With that being said, it's up to us to water the soil that we grew from in order to help those in our community blossom into their full potential too. We must look toward the future, and our future is walking the halls of the schools within our school system. Special congratulations to the recipients of this year's um, Mayor's Ball Scholarship, and thank you Mayor Lowe and Mrs. Lowe for believing in me and believing in our community. Thank you. My name is Ethan Calhoun, and I'm from Phoenix City, obviously. I grew up in Phoenix City. Uh, my parents still live in Phoenix City, in a house on Somerville Road. Um, I went to Central High School and graduated in 2014. I think that was the, the first year the Mayor's Scholarship um, was actually given out. And I remember at the ceremony, Mayor Lowe made us all get up and speak and tell everybody what we were going to do with our lives. And at that time, I was really confident and got up and told everybody I was going to be a medical doctor. Well, I went off to Kansas State where I played football, and I remember the first day of class. Uh, my first class was chemistry. I walk into chemistry, and the professor says, if, if you're not proficient in calculus, then you're probably not going to do well in this class. Um, so I dropped it, of course. <laughs> And I, I remember after I dropped it, I wasn't sure what I was going to do. I went back home to a Central High School football game and remember people asking me if I was still going to be a doctor. And I thought in my head, well, you know, I was pretty good at convincing everybody of a lie, so maybe I should be an attorney. And so that's what I ended up pursuing. And I was at Kansas State for a year, so for a little bit longer after I came back home to the Central game, and then I transferred to Troy, where I also played football. Um, we beat LSU, I was on that team, 
Um, and then I went to the University of Alabama School of Law. I graduated a little over a year ago. Um, so after I graduated, I took the bar exam. I passed it. That was probably the hardest part of it. I'm currently a clerk for a federal judge in Montgomery, and in September I will be another clerk or a clerk again for a federal judge in Wilmington, Delaware. Um, <laughs> Mayor Lowe asked me to speak today um, and say what this scholarship meant to me. And one thing that this scholarship definitely did was provide needed funding for my college education. But I think there's something else that it did, and something that's maybe a little bit more important. Phoenix City is a really unique place in that no matter what race you are, no matter what religion you are, no matter how much money you have, the community truly cares about you. The community supports you. In fact, Mayor Lowe was actually the first person to teach me how to tie a tie. I don't know if he knows that, but he was. And I think somebody asked me a few weeks ago, what, is, what do I think is the most important thing to success, or a child's success? And I said confidence. But confidence is not something you're born with. It's something that you get through support. Support from not only your family, but support from your community. And Phoenix City is one of those places that has always supported all the students throughout the community. And if you don't believe me, I don't think you've ever been to a Central High School football game against Smith Station. <laughs> and so I would like to conclude just by thanking Mayor Lowe and everybody that put this on. I truly appreciate the scholarship. I don't think that I would be where I am today if it weren't for the support that this community has given me. And I encourage you to provide your support tonight. Thank you. Awesome. I'm just paying attention, taking notes. Isn't that wonderful? Give them another big round of applause. Awesome. But she got me straight. She is a registered nurse. I know, that's right. Let me tell you something. I would, if I'm in the hospital, I want to see her over me. I'm telling you that, because she studied. <laughs> she went to college and started out as a sophomore. Come on now. Go on, honey. He's talking about chemistry. Hey, organic chemistry changed my life. Yes, I thought I was going to be a dentist. See what I'm doing right now, right? <laughs> I got you. Organic chemistry is the devil. I'm telling you right now. So yeah. what, what, what stuff is going on with Palmer Williams Jr. life? What, what you got happening? What's happening? Um, just tuition for two kids right now. Um, other than that, um, I actually successfully shot my own sitcom that I wrote myself. And so hopefully we're going to be pitching it. And um, it'll probably be starring in some of the later episodes, Miss Vivica A. Fox, if I can convince her. <laughs> see, how, see how I did that, Mayor? See how I did that? Roll it right on in. Come on, somebody. Help me, Jesus. But no, uh, and I am actually successfully retiring from 25 years of being a landscaper. A lot of people don't know that. I had a landscape business for 25 years, so, yeah. So people think that it's all about just TV. You gotta have several streams of income so that you can hopefully make contributions to scholarship funds and things like that. Not to mention, the, you see, I'm gonna hold you to it. I heard you. But then, not to mention the fact, for some reason, my children like to eat every day. I, they will not fast for nothing. It's not spiritual. I'm sorry. So what's going on with you, Super Dave? Other than a thousand radio stations you're in charge of right I now. I know, right? We got a lot of stuff going on. At, uh, that was prophetic what I just did. Yeah, I know. That. It's good. I feel like it sometimes, but it's all good, man. We're just uh, serving the community. That's what we do here. Just like these fine folks taking care of, of our young people. So we're all about serving and being servants in our community. So that's what we do, right, folks? Right. Everybody in here, give yourself a round of applause. I have one last thing to say about it. I have found out that the secret to long life is actually giving. I don't know what it is about giving. You cannot be God's giving above anybody else. But if you just try, 
you know, he's going to still be pleased with what you're doing, and you're going to feel good about that. I don't know about you, but just to see the success stories of these two young people right here, you know, we may need one of them, or both, at some point or another, because, you know, a lot of y'all like to pop off at people. You're going to need an attorney. <laughs> Amen? And if you pop off the wrong way, you're going to need a nurse. <laughs> Especially if you can't fight. Come on, Jesus. Anyway, I'm going to leave that alone before we have to take up a love offering for scholarships. Amen. All right, at this time. Sponsor recognition. You, you, you scared of that first name, aren't you? I'm going to let you do that one. Go Shakira ahead. Gray, Miss oh, Shakira look Gray. Look at you, look at you. I talk for a living. Okay. Miss Shakira Gray and Miss Courtney Gray, committee members, please join us up here to recognize our sponsors. Look at their fans, too. Quick. They were quick. Woo. Next year I'm gonna wear some track shoes. I should have bought a towel or something like that. Okay, I think he called me Shakira Gray, which like I'm okay with being in the same wheelhouse as Shakira, but it is Sacra Gray. How do you, you say it? Sacra Gray, but but you were close and I appreciate the effort. Yeah, you were close. <laughs> you, you, were you were close. close. You were close. That's why I let you do it. There are you were standing real close to me when I was. I ain't gonna even say anything about it. I thought you were another race. <laughs> We ain't gonna even talk about that. I thought that was one of our names. I'm gonna leave that right there. Well, and then to add to it, I'm Sacra Gray. This is Corgi Gray. We're not related, unless maybe you have an Asian cousin. I don't know. I'm not sure about that. But all right, tonight we wanted to give a shout out to a lot of the people that helped make this event happen. Our Super Diamond sponsors, when we read out your name, please stand up so we can give you a round of applause. All right, first we have Aflac. And then we have the City of Phoenix City. Cable TV of East Alabama. WC Bradley Realty Company. Wiregrass RC and D. And last but not least, Mayor Eddie Lowe, First Lady Deborah Lowe, and their family.
Gamata Omega Chapter, Greater Mount Zion Baptist Church, I Heart Radio, Jack Houston Memorial Hospital, James D. Yancey, Lane Services, Latoya King Agency, Farmers Insurance, Mike Bowden Realty, Mrs. Patricia Eldridge, Mount Olive Baptist Church, Phoenix City Board of Education, Phoenix City Housing Authority, Phoenix City Paving and Maintenance, Pine Hill Missionary Baptist Church, PMB Broadcasting, Publix Grocers, Ram Riverfront Hospitality, LLC, Russell County Commissioner Ronnie Reed, Russell County Sheriff Heath Taylor, Synovus Bank of East Alabama, Taylor Funeral Home, Thomas Consulting, LLC, Trimcore, LLC, Tesis, a global payments company, W.C. Bradley Realty Company, West Rock Corporation, and Wiregrass. Thank you again on behalf of the Phoenix City Mayor's Ball Commission for your generous donations. Y'all get loud for all of our sponsors. Come on. Palmer, you going you gonna to work out that pronunciation of that name back there. He's got this. No, go ahead, man. I'm embarrassed now. No, come on, you're good. You sure? I think it's okay. They're gone. <laughs> Make it so bad, you the one that messed up a name. <laughs> what's supposed to say that for? And I still don't know how to pronounce it, but I want to make sure that we could give it up for the lovely ladies that just did that presentation. Miss Gray and Miss Gray. Look at you. You smart now. Yeah, I figured it out. <laughs> Give it up for Ms. and Mrs. Gray. Right. Yes, very good. Well, right now I have the distinct pleasure of introducing our guest speaker. This young lady, and I like to say that because we're the same age, because we're both 41 years old. So I want to say that um, this, this woman has been an icon in the business and she is yet still a young lady in this business. You've seen her in so many different shows. I could mention some of the movies that are one of them, Posterior Call, if you know what that means. Um, uh, one of my favorites. Uh, is, yes, you know what I'm trying to say. Very proper to me. Uh, I can say Booty Call? Okay, Booty Call. All right, I'm not sure. One of the like, what? phenomenal breakout uh, of her roles in Independence Day, where she really took us by storm in the beginning of that. I really enjoyed her performance more so than I would like to tell publicly. But, um, but also, she has been a woman of daytime soap operas and has also won various awards such as NAACP Image Awards and is soon to, I'm sure, win an Oscar one day real soon because she is that type of performer. She gives her all into it and has been a voice also in the community at large and voicing her, her opinions of how things should be and how things should change for our community and everyone's community involved. Please, if you don't mind, give a big round of applause and a standing ovation already for Miss Vivica A. Fox. tonight. 
Um, I've been here before, but tonight, to see as a community how much you all care about excellence and education has just been so refreshing. So please, as a community, please give yourself a round of applause. Y'all doing good things, okay? Big things, as a matter of fact. Now, I'm going to tell y'all something. Your girl came all the way from L.A. last night on a red eye, came to Atlanta, and then we drove here. Um, and it's a weekend where in L.A., y'all, they are celebrating the BET Awards, okay? So wait a minute. You know they out there dropping it like it's hot in L.A., getting their groove on the whole weekend. But to be honest with you, I prefer to be here with you all. I do. Because I'm all about community and especially supporting Generation Next. Our children, they have next. Because our world is changing so rapidly, so fastly. It seems like every morning that we wake up, we hear something on the news or you know, that you get a, a text or an alert of things that are just changing for our communities daily. We lost a couple of years with COVID where we didn't even get to celebrate and be around each other. And it just feels so good to be back. I'm telling y'all, y'all look so beautiful tonight. Everybody's dressed up. First of all, I was like, okay, Phoenix, y'all got y'all outfits on? Okay, looking good? And, and it's really made me proud. I want to say to the beautiful, um, the, 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 the ladies that I met that won the Miss Alabama, Miss Teen Alabama, that you guys are such a beautiful representation of, uh, of, of, Phoenix, Alabama, of Phoenix and Alabama in general, that it just warms my heart to see that the scholarships that you all are winning tonight, not only are you beautiful, but that you are using your brain as women to be chapter next of our future leaders that you're not just pretty faces, that you all made me so proud when I asked you, so what are you doing, what are you representing, that you all spoke so eloquently, and you were just beautiful representation of Alabama, so please be very proud of yourself, please keep moving forward and know that you can do anything you want to do, because I have a firm, firm belief that women can do anything. So it was a pleasure to meet y'all tonight. I hope y'all post our pictures with our leg out, girl. Yeah. Tag me at Miss Reed Fox, okay? All right, don't forget about me. <laughs> I want to send a special shout out to the people that brought me here. Um, a special shout out to Miss Denise Mitchum, this beautiful lady right here. It was a, definitely a journey for us getting here. But she said, you have no idea how much Phoenix is going to take good care of you, Vivica. So I walk into my dressing room, and whoo, child, was I surprised. Oh, my God, it was like a little pretty and pink palace. And I didn't even know if you all knew how much I love Sparkle. So, um, you know, it, it, you have not let me down uh, to Mr. Richard Jordan. Thank you so much for making sure that I knew how this beautiful evening was going to unfold. Absolutely every layer of tonight has been beautiful from the moment I got here to my dressing room to then walking into this beautiful ballroom tonight. So um, you uh, definitely delivered tonight on your promise. And then um, last but not least, I have to say a special thank you to this incredibly beautiful, you got the finest first lady out of bed. Wow, wow. First lady came from my house. Come on, Miss Phoenix. Come on, baby. You know I need to get my picture. Come on, girl. <laughs> she had the wall one arm ready. She was like, this is my good side, okay? And your very handsome husband, Mayor Ed Love. I want to acknowledge you, Mayor, for your impeccable reputation and your intentions for your community. I have a saying that you can't always take from your community, especially when you are a celebrity or a public person, that you have to make sure that you give back. 
i've heard a lot of wonderful stories about you i really have heard that you can go pretty much anywhere in this community and everyone embraces you that's incredible so many times our public figures they gotta go places with security they're not always welcomed everywhere that takes a real man to do that and i commend you for that you are an excellent role model not only for african-american men but for all and i commend you Child, it's hard nowadays being role model <laughs> just as they do. Um, I want to send, send, out, send out a special congratulations. Congratulations to all the uh, awardees of the scholarships. As I said, darling, you all have made me so proud. Um, because honestly, when I thought that I was coming here tonight, um, I, I thought it was going to be an event only for African Americans, to be very honest with you. And I think that's what's warmed my heart more than anything else, is that Alabama, which is known for the South, for being segregated and separate. Look at all of y'all. I see black, I see white, I see male, I see female. You guys are a community. In a time where our country is being so divided that you all make me proud. My mom is from West Point, Mississippi. She's from the South. And she's always taught me to be a hardworking woman, to know that just because of your looks or who you may think you are, no one owes you anything. You have to do the work. I left home when I was 17 years old in search of a dream that I've been able to live out beyond my wildest expectations. And I'm here to tell the generation next, I know with y'all, y'all think that everything comes so quickly, so easy, because some things do. Y'all think you can swipe, get on TikTok, YouTube, whatever, have millions of views, this, that, and the third. That happens to several. But overall, if you want to build a career that you are proud of, a career does not happen over, overnight. A career is built. I have been doing this for over three decades. I will be 58 years old in July. I'm gonna tell y'all something. I'm just now receiving my flowers. I'm not gonna lie. So everywhere I go when they want to give me a flower or a sparkly room, I'm taking it, okay? <laughs> because there's so many times that I thought, oh my God, I thought I should win, or I thought I should do this, or I thought it didn't happen. You know, when it is your time, it will be your time. But if you have not done the work and you're not ready, you have absolutely no one to blame but yourself. I had a wonderful acting coach back in the day. She used to always tell me that I would go up for roles and I would always get in the top three because I'm in a business where it's like, you can go up for a role, honey, you think you fine, cute, I got it. You walk in the room and there's 10 other fine, cute ones there, I think they got it too. <laughs> but I was like getting in the top three for like a very long time. And then I would hear, oh, they gave it to such and such with a name. And I was like, she didn't even audition. <laughs> They're like, well, she's got a name, you know. So you have to take that. And that was when, I honestly had to build a strong belief in myself that when it was my turn, that it would happen for me. And that happened with Independence Day. And I'm glad you enjoyed it so much, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, was, it was memorable. It, okay, just fabulous. It, it, it might have been the scene with the pole. I, okay, that's all right. <laughs> Or the great hair toss, I saved the dog and the first lady, you know. <laughs> oh my God, you know my mama hated that scene? She, she did, she said, child, they just couldn't have put up a sign or something when you walked across your butt. It was like, I was like, mom, I worked hard for that booty, leave me alone. <laughs> I trained for that moment. Um, <laughs> I did, y'all, y'all had no idea what they put us through for that. Um, but I also wanna say, that when my turn 
finally it did come. Because it seemed like all of my life, even from the time that I graduated high school, that I was always faced with naysayers. I'll never forget when I was a senior in high school, and everybody's like, what are you gonna do next? You know, everybody's asking, you going to college? You're getting married, what are you gonna do? And I was like, I'm going to LA and I'm gonna become a movie star. They was like, Angie Fox, you're gonna be right back here. So let me tell you the thing about Angie Fox. When I was growing up, no one could pronounce biblical. They couldn't. I was called by lack of a visa. <laughs> So I, you know, I, I, I grew very sensitive about it. So I remember having like, you know, substitute teachers and they would get to my name and I'd be like, just call me Angie. And they would be like, oh, okay, it says Vivica, but you know, oh, you, you can pronounce it, but no one else can. And I would get teased about it. And it wasn't until I met a casting director in, in Los Angeles. And I did what I normally did that when I came in to the audition, she went to say my name, I was like, no, you can just call me Angie Fox. And she says, but your name's Bibica. Your mother gave you that name, right? And I said, yes, she did. She says, as a matter of fact, you, on all of your headshots, and your title now should be Bibica A. Fox. So that, that remember, that girl, Bibica, that's a fox. <laughs> Vivica A. Fox has now grossed with her movies over a billion dollars. I had my naysayers tell me I could become a movie star. I had my naysayers tell me that once you kind of play the young ingenue and then you get a little bit older, what you got next? I'm in a business that usually when women turn 40, they put us out to pasture. Unfortunately, like we have nothing else to offer. Well, those days are over, and we are proving them all wrong. I have a wonderful friend by the name of Debbie Smith who says, Darlings, it gets greater later. <laughs> and she's proven that right. I've now went on to become a producer, a director, an author, and a philanthropist, and a very proud African American sister who stands before me that I hope that I enlighten you, that I encourage you, that once again, like I said, I inspire all women to know you can do anything. To Generation Next, I say the same thing to you. You can do anything. But darlings, please do the work. God bless you. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, now he's really showing up. <laughs> hey, when you were teaching me, you didn't tell me about that part. Walking all the way to the seat, I love it. Alabama gentleman right there. He even sang the song, I love it. Lord, I ran so fast, I untied my shoe. <laughs> I think you got this. But the fact that I ran up there, you should have seen the, the deputy sheriff over there. He was looking like, okay, all right. Mayor Lowe gave you permission. <laughs> Push you right up at the ball. All right. Did y'all enjoy Miss Vivica A? <laughs> Came all the way down here. From LA to Phoenix City. Yeah, man, she was running away from the BET Awards what she was doing. <laughs> It's safer here. <laughs> we won't go any further with that. <laughs> My luck. B E T. But anyway, <laughs> that was so. No, 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 Lord, no. Don't make me say it. 
But uh, we're going to have some closing remarks right now on the none other than the Honorable Eddie and First Lady Deborah Lowe. Please, please, they deserve a round of applause like none other. Come on now, you fool because of them. You always wait on me to come down. Don't forget your shoes untied. I know, right? Sound like this would be like. I'm getting tired already. I'm running. Mary, you need some help? <laughs> I know, that's right. Let, let's, let's go over here one more time. Let's look at the dress one more time. Okay, now let's go to the other one. Pretty epic. You gotta show this side. You gotta show that side. Oh, I'm sorry. You gotta show this side. Over here. So sorry. Y'all so check this out. It's beautiful. Now, Mary, I know this is not your wheelhouse and you don't like the wall either. Let's go ahead. Let's, let's, let's go ahead and do a little walk right here. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. He is such a finance guy. Jesus. Just loosen your tie a little bit. You still got that white cotton now? Jeez. That's a brother man car now. You got that town car. Getting 800 feet to the gallon. And you can't just soul brother walk. Through. If y'all ever see Mayor walking like that, please get him drug tested because that, that is not him. But very honorably, please welcome Mayor Lowe and his lovely wife, Deborah Lowe. Thank you, Bart. Um, I not even say my name so proper. Hey, you do have two first names and two last names. Yes, I do. Thank you so much. And also, I want to say this. I don't think any of you all have ever been a, to an event where you have host and a co-host. Both of them are bald-headed. <laughs> I think I look better on that one than with Paris. I'm going to leave that alone because you got sheriff deputies on payroll. So. First name basis. I just want to come back. Thank I enjoyed you, my chicken. Thank, one thank you all so much. Uh, first of all, let me say this. And I appreciate my wife because she does pushes me. And I am going to have her to do something that's the first time that she's spoken. I've been telling her, you, you have to speak more. So. She's going to do that tonight. But two of the most powerful words that we can say when it's done sincerely and honestly is thank you. Powerful words. And Deborah and I, along with our committee, want to say thank you all so very much for making this possible. Without you all, none of this could take place. Now, we do believe, Deborah and I do believe, and in, in, um, Mrs. Vivica A. Fox mentioned this, but we are a community and a region that believes in inclusion because we know that inclusion brings diversity and diversity brings strength. And that's what has taken place tonight as well as the beginning of 2014 when we started this. That's what the other community, as you heard Ms. Vivica A. Fox say, so very, very adamantly. And we truly believe in that. And again, I do want to say that for the past two years, it's been tough. And this year's mayor's ball, unlike any other mayor's ball that we've had for this reason, because you all still showed up in the tough times that we've had. And that is what a community do when, you, when they care. That's what a righteous community and region does when they care. And we certainly thank you all so very, very much for that. And because of your caring and your generosity and what you believe in and supporting these young people, which are our next generation, is so, so true. And because you have stepped up, because you care about this community and this region, and also because we are a righteous community. The 
because of that, we have raised this year's total of $167,205. And positively, Phoenix City. If that does not say it's positive, I don't know what else we can do. But thank you all so very, very much. We could not do it without you. And I just want to ask very humbly and sincere that you continue to contribute to such a wonderful cause. And when we do that, we will always be able to be that icon for other cities. I just can't thank you enough, but I will say this with a thank you also comes that I owe you all. Deborah and I in this community owe you all because when you say thank you to someone, you're really telling them that you owe them an I owe you. And my I owe you to you, Deborah and I, to you all is that as the mayor of Phoenix City and my lovely wife here, we will continue to care for this community. We will continue to give of ourselves. We will continue to be the sacrificial leader to make it better for our community. Thank you all so very much, and now I want to turn it over to my wife. Yeah. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. I'm hoping you guys are enjoying yourself. I can truly say I am happy to be out again. We've been in for two years. In spite of being in, the Lord still blessed the foundation. We were still able to award scholarships without this ball. So we know this is of God, so it will continue on. I know you guys think that it's just in and out. Y'all give us all this accolade, but stand to tell you tonight, we stand on the shoulders of a firm, strong committee. I would commit it, members, if you will, please come forward. All of the Phoenix City Mayor's committee members. <laughs> While they're making their way to the dance floor, I would like for my children and uh, my grandson to join us on the stage. You know, being in the role that we are in, it takes away a lot of time from our family. But I must admit, they, be, they are patient with us. Sometimes the baby girl will say, Mom, we ain't gonna stay at home sometime. <laughs> but, you know, it is what it is, but they do respect what we do, and we want them to know that we appreciate them as well. So if you guys can please come up. Thank you. Oh, oh Nero Lowe said you are on the stage too. Nick Jackson, where are you? Brittany Gray, where are Sakura. you? Sakura, where are you? Jeremy Gordon. Gray. committee members to you guys. Once I call your name, will you please step forward? So I need to guys to kind of back it up a little bit. <laughs> yes, thank you. They think I like to give orders. <laughs> you all know better, right? <laughs> when I call your name, please come forward. Annie Lindsay. Ann <laughs> Taylor Phillips could be with us tonight. Uh, I'm looking for Michelle and Anthony Wallace before we go forward. They're not here. Okay. Brittany Gray, please come forward. Okay, we'll keep going. Carolyn Walker. <laughs> Brittany Gray. Tiffany Jackson couldn't be here with us tonight. Jess Bonica Florence. <laughs> Jeremy Gray. Joan Gatewood.
Joshua Gomez out of town, Kimberly Hinton Poole, Natasha Archibald, <laughs> Lakeisha Leggins, <laughs> Marilyn Brannon, <laughs> Nick Jackson. Did he come back? Oh, oh. <laughs> they're the youngest two on the committee, so bear with us. Teach them how to run. I have no idea. Always. Always. They're the youngest one. Nick and Brittany, your name. Your name have been called, so you guys Step have forward. to come greet. Step forward. <laughs> he doesn't mind. <laughs> All right. Step back. All right. <laughs> Pastor Don Abram. He's not here. Okay, Patricia Miles. Patricia. Patricia Alexander. Ron Durbin. She's not here. Sakura Gray. Tommy Lowe. Tracy Stone. Wanda Cotton. Last but not least, the chair of this committee is Yolanda Daniels. Would you all think, please give them a round of applause? They work very, very hard. We couldn't do it without them. We truly appreciate you guys, and you all keep us going. So thanks for all you do. And at this time, uh, we have a special award for one of our committee members. Thank you, honey, you did good. Yeah. Huh? She, they up here telling me not to get fresh. <laughs> That's how you get pregnant. <laughs> you did it for Sarah and Ruth? spoken of, we have a special acknowledgement that uh, none of the committee members knows about, maybe one person, uh, and we did that for a reason. I don't want you all to think that uh, we didn't tell you all everything. They all know we believe honestly in transparency, but you know, sometimes you have to keep things to yourself because sometimes that little birdie flies and we didn't want to take that chance. But it, it gives me great honor. Come on, honey. You and me both. It gives us great honor and privilege to be able to acknowledge this person um, for what they have done for so many, many years. Um, it exemplifies what she believes in because she has done it for so many, many years and has always been at the hem of whipping kids, because I got whipped one time, <laughs> for educating kids, and has done it all her life, and still a part of this committee that works extremely hard to give back. And I want to say this, that uh, she, we have a saying that we really, really take from a dollar, but they changed that to a penny up. But it gives me great pleasure to uh, give this acknowledgement, and I will read it out uh, to such a wonderful person. It exemplifies when you have a passion for something, uh, you do it and do it and do it and do it. And that's what uh, this person has done. So with this, I would like to read this and say with our greatest appreciation to Annie Lindsay.
who was my second grade teacher, honestly, and she whipped me, and I deserved it. And my wife, brother. You know, back in the day, they used to do that, Paul. Oh, yeah, my father was a principal. Yeah, his left arm was and, bigger than that. Honestly, she, this person is my second grade teacher. A woman, yeah, I was. Huh? Well, she still put me in line, so she's still my teacher. But with our greatest appreciation to Annie and Lindsay, with this award for your ongoing commitment and dedication to education from the mayor and the mayor's ball committee members, we present you with this plaque for doing it for so many years, and it's a testimony that you all can continue to contribute, regardless of how long you've been in your business. And we would like to present this to you, Ms. Annie Lindsay, my former second grade teacher, who whipped me. Ball, and it is a wonderful occasion. We caught up with Russell County Sheriff Heath Taylor, and he's always very present in the community. Now, Sheriff, I want to know why it's so important for you to be here tonight. Well, I want to come out and support the mayor and, and uh, Miss Lowe in their endeavor that they've been doing since 2014. Wow. And, um, and so we try to be here and support them and, and sponsor it. But, you know, they're giving back to our kids. And our kids and our community is what all of us have to look forward to. And so um, it's a very worthwhile cause. And I really enjoy the dinner tonight. The entertainment's great. Palmer's great. Yes. And so um, it's just a, it's a very worthwhile cause that we do, that they do for us in Phoenix City. Wow. And I hope the community heard that. He said sponsor. That's what they do. And a lot of times you don't get to see that in the community. And we appreciate all that you give back to the community. Well, look, it's my pleasure. The Sheriff's Office has uh, been a sponsor of this Mayor's Ball since the beginning. Wow. And we've done it every year, and we're pleased to do it in the future. 
Well, we want to thank you. You're, you're the people's sheriff, okay? You're the people's I, I sheriff. Hope so. Yes, you are. This is what's happening at Phoenix City Mayor's Ball. We're having a great time at Phoenix City Mayor's Ball. And we have just caught up with DJ with Sports Vision, DJ Jones, and of course his lovely broad, Candy Lowe. Thank you all so much for your time. You look lovely. But thank you. You know, first of all, I want to thank Mayor Lowe and Mrs. Lowe for such an amazing event that was put on today with so many uh, wonderful people. To give back to the community was amazing. Seeing the young people come out and a couple of the people shared the experience of how the the awards, the the charity, yes. the uh, give back wow. to uh, encourage, to, to motivate them to go to school, to yes. go to college was unbelievable. Yes. And I'm just so excited to be I here. I know, isn't it a blessing to see? And I know it is gratifying for DJ because some of these recipients probably have come through Sports Vision program with getting awards. So I'm pretty sure it feels like a proud papa moment too because that's what you all love to do, give back to the young people. Absolutely. Pouring back into the community is uh, what we are all about, especially the young people, because again, you know as the old saying goes, those young people are our future. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, we want to thank you all so much, and I, I'm going to allow you both to congratulate the city of Phoenix City. Well, positively Phoenix City, I tell you what, on behalf of Candy Lowe Jones, I'm DJ Jones. Thank you, Mayor Lowe. Thank you, First Lady. We appreciate everything you've done. This has been spectacular. Absolutely. And you said it well, positivity. That's Mary Lowe thing. This is what's happening at the wonderful Mayor's Ball in Columbus, Georgia. It is the ninth annual. You're watching here on Being TV. And now we have caught up with one of the scholarship recipients, Brianna, and I love her message to the guests. Congratulations. Thank you. Wow. Well, how does it feel to receive and a scholarship like this? Because so many desire to have it, and you are so appreciative. We could feel your gratitude as you were speaking. Yes, it is a once-in-a-lifetime feeling, to be honest, because the only thing that you think about when you're applying for all those scholarships is I am the 1% chance of getting it from the thousands of other people that are applying also. So when you hear your name get called, it is absolutely a feeling that I cannot describe. But I would love to show my appreciation to Mayor Lowe and Mrs. Lowe by saying thank you so much. I've used it to my advantage. I've gone on and got my bachelor's degree. I'm in my master's program. And I just would love to tell the community, go out and apply for scholarships. You are able to grow. You are able to prosper. You're able to succeed. You just have to start somewhere. And this is a great start for a lot of people, especially in high school. Wow, and it sounds like you're paying it for Absolutely. I love my community. I came back home after I graduated and I would love to help out um, if there is any way that I can help. If you see me in the community, you can always flag me down and I'm always here to talk to you. Aww. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. I'm so proud. This is what's happening. Lives are being impacted forever. Generations are being impacted all because of the community coming together to give back. Wow, Mayor Eddie Lowe and First Lady Lowe, thank you so much for the vision and thank you for sharing it right here in this community. We just caught up with some attendees. I actually thought they were award or scholarship recipients, but they are grown women. <laughs> so to my right, I want you to tell me your name because you said this is your first time attending one of Phoenix City Mayor's Ball. Tell yes. us your name. So my name is Brianna and it's my first year attending the Mayor's Ball. Wow. Do you live in this area? I do. I do live in the area. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. So what is your reaction? What do you think about it? It's an awesome event. I think um, if you're in the area, it's all about community yes. and definitely support the event. It's uh, for our younger generation. Yes. Just awesome yeah. just exactly. support exactly so, yeah. exactly and I was telling them I wish I got this when I was going to college all right tell us your name so my name is Chrishayla Armour um, I grew up in Phoenix City I graduated from Smith Station High School um, this wow. is in our first time uh, we've been here this is maybe our fourth one okay. 
um, but we always have an excellent time, good food, good environment. Yeah. We just have a good time and it's for a good cause. And they level up every time. Every time, <laughs> every time. Every, it's well, like, wow, wow. I know, I know. Yeah. I was told by uh, one of the committee members, attorney Nick Jackson, he said that whenever Lady Lowe is involved, she goes over the top. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be fabulous. Yes, if, if, Ms. Yes. if Ms. Lowe is involved, it's going to be fabulous. Yes. Yeah. So this is what's happening. Congratulations to Phoenix City Mayor Small and the committee members on your ninth annual gala. We have just caught up with Phoenix City Councilwoman Vicki Carter Johnson, who has been here tonight and always supporting in the community as well. I know you enjoy tonight. And first of all, you look so amazing as always. Well, thank you so much. And you always look stunning and do a great job. Oh, so continue you. doing the great work that you are doing. See, this is what I love about Phoenix City. You always get encouragement. When I tell you, they really are sincere. Thank you. You always encourage me. You make me want to run even more. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yes. Uh, I think um, the camaraderie and the uh, support that we get throughout Phoenix City really kind of enhances um, the initiative that we strive to do every day. And that is just uplift and uh, encourage and inspire our people um, to do their best. Wow. Yeah. Well, Phoenix absolutely. City does it well. When you see what has happened here. This is what's happened on a day-to-day -day basis here. A lot of time, the cameras don't get to see it all. But tonight, you got a glimpse of what's happening here in Phoenix City. We wanna thank you for your service. You are so welcome. Let me just also thank uh, the mayor and first yes. lady mm -hmm. uh, for the great works that they are doing. Absolutely. They did an outstanding job tonight. I believe this is their ninth, ninth annual, annual mayor's ball and charity uh, ball. Um, the mayor continues to do um, great things throughout the community. He is a leader that um, inspire and uplift us every day. Yes. And so I learned so much from him, his um, tenacity, his his energy, his vibe, his positive yes. vibes, it yes. just runs throughout Phoenix wow. City. And I am just so blessed, yes. so fortunate, and very humble to be a part of the council with the mayor. Wow. And Great he, job tonight. And I'm going to add what is happening with you all service back to the community and give back. These younger generations, they're grasps, grasping what you all have been given and they are paying it forward too. We heard those testimonials yes. today. And um, I mean, from a, a registered nurse yeah. to a lawyer, um, a lot of people are really benefiting uh, from these uh, funds. Absolutely. So the impact is so great. Yes. And that's what we like to hear and see right here in Phoenix City. I love it. Phoenix City positivity. Phoenix positivity right. is happening in Phoenix City, Alabama. Yes. You're watching here on cable TV. As we promised, we have caught up with our special guest, Miss Vivica A. Fox. Hey. And she is a fox, just like I told you. I mean, camera, I need you to see all of this. She yeah. is just so yeah. gorgeous. Yes, yes, yes. Fox. Fabulous. Oh, my. And she is so kind. First of all, welcome again to Phoenix City and Columbus, Georgia. We have been blessed by your inspiration you share here at the ball. Help the community here to know more about why it's so important for you to be here. Because you could have been in L.A. I know, because the <laughs> BET Awards was popping off this yes. weekend, y'all. But to be honest with you, I'm all about community. I'm all about community. I'm all about giving back. And when I found out that this event was honoring, honoring Generation Next, that we were raising money for kids to get scholarship to further their education. I was like, absolutely, let's go there, let's make it happen, because Lord knows I've done enough BET Awards. But to all the honorees out there with the BET Awards, congratulations. Yes. But it's best for me in this chapter of my life um, to be about community, because right now our country, you know, it's, it's uh, in a scary place. So for me to be here to let the community know that I care about them, this is my way of giving back. You guys have been so supportive of my career, whether I do movies, television shows, my hairline, whatever it is I do, you guys always support me. So I think it's important for you all to see me in person. Mm -hmm. 
Thank get a you. hug, take pictures yes. with me, have a little dance, yes. Yes. <laughs> and get some words of encouragement. And she has done all of that. She has been so gracious to everyone here. I want to ask you something because I didn't know it started with Soul Train. Yes. I saw that, <laughs> and I bet a lot of people didn't know that. Oh my gosh, listen, I'm from Indianapolis, Indiana, and growing up, Soul Train was like the African-American version of American Bandstand. And so when I moved to California and got an opportunity to go on Soul Train, and then I got on the riser, and then I did the Soul Train Scamble Board. And then years later, when I became Vivica A. Fox, I hosted the wow. award several times for the late Don Cornelius, mm. who I will absolutely love. Awesome, awesome. And before we let you go, I want to know, how does it feel to live a life of greatness because your name is great. Oh. I heard you as you were sharing with the community, you know, success requires time. Yes. But Vivica A. Fox is a household name yeah. and it's great. Yeah. And so you're living a life of greatness. Thank you. I'm very grateful for it. I mean, I don't take this for granted. Um, too much is given, much is expected. So I always make sure that I let everybody know I'm not perfect, um, but I do my best to represent um, my community and my country, um, and especially being an African-American woman um, in a business that normally, like I told you all, they don't let us have the resurgence that I'm having in my career right now that I'm grateful. I appreciate y'all. Come in July, though. I'm letting y'all know it's the month for Vivica Fox. It's oh, my birthday month okay. kicking off. I got four films dropping Ooh, every Friday on the Lifetime on. Movie Network. Ooh. Keeping Up with the Joneses is back. Okay. Y'all gonna see me on Good Morning America, Ooh. Kelly and Ryan everywhere. Yes. So get ready and Leo Nation, what's up? Oh, you heard it. You heard it right here in Phoenix City, Alabama and Columbus, Georgia from the Fox. Vivica A. Fox. You're watching here on Bean TV. An amazing gala, Phoenix City's Mayor's Ball. We have caught up with, I like to call them, the People's Mayor and the People's First Lady. Congratulations on your ninth annual Night of Success and Give Back. Yeah. Did I hear correctly, Mayor Eddie Lowe, like a hundred and sixty some thousand dollars? Yes, a hundred and sixty seven thousand two hundred and five dollars. Yes. Wow. All still in a pandemic. Yes. And we're grateful. That lets you know what kind of community we Amen. live in. Amen. You know, you you've been preaching this for a long time. The quickest way to get ahead is to help others. We're seeing the fruit of it. Yes, uh, like you said, that we understand that. That's why I made mm. the statement. Inclusion brings diversity and diversity brings strength. And you saw the strength when wow. we come together as a community. Okay. And Deborah and I are so grateful for that. Wow, Lady Low, Lady Low. First of all, woo! See, y'all was wondering why I call her Lady. <laughs> she represents what Lady looks like. <laughs> I am totally impressed. Didn't expect nothing less. But the word on the street, with the street talkers out there too in the community, when you do something and when you're involved, it's over the top. <laughs> you took us over the top. <laughs> Loretta, we're just glad to be back. Um, we had a pandemic for two years. So just to be back in person was huge. And tonight was outstanding. We're more proud of our community more so than anything for the love and support that yes. we're getting from them. That's why we're able to do what we're doing tonight. You know, I love what she said, the love and support that they are receiving. You're receiving what you've been given for so many yeah. years. Let me tell you, I had an opportunity to speak with some recipients and they were so grateful for you all pouring it to them. Mm. How does that make you feel when well, they what we hope, you? What we really hope uh, is that if just one of those recipients that we've done over the years, mm. if one of them followed this example yes. when they become successful, yeah. notice how I said not if they become successful, yes. but when they come successful in whatever community they land in, they can replicate and do the same thing because it works. A caring community works and you can start of something that shows how much you care and you can be the start of something that's great, wow. that's bigger and more important than you are. And wow. that's what Deborah and I have always wanted to do because again, 
You have to invest in people, and that's what we want to do. Wow, I love it. I love it how a community is moving. Really, <laughs> you are. <laughs> You are, have created a mission and that so many are gravitating to. And it makes me proud to be an Alabamian. Well, we're, <laughs> we're so grateful. You know, if everyone can live by this principle, the reason why the Dead Sea is dead, mm. that it only takes in and it doesn't give out because there's not any, wow. any uh, way for it to go out. But it only receives money, but it doesn't give out. And so it's a dead sea because nothing can live in. So mm. the irony behind it is in order to live, we must give. Give yes. of ourselves, yes. give of our finances to invest in people and yes. invest in the community. Wow. That's the option. Wow. Well, you've heard it from the people's mayor. That means he's your mayor too. <laughs> Mayor Eddie Lowe and Lady Lowe of Phoenix City, Alabama, congratulations on your ninth annual scholarship ball. Amazing. You're watching here on cable TV. We're having a great time with the one and only Palmer Williams Jr., actor. Oh, wow. The host of tonight's event and always brings a fabulous time. You had a, a different twist tonight with the co-host Dave Arwood. Yes, and it was very, very refreshing. Yes. Um, he just like jumped in. Like he said, he was, we both kind of shot it from the hip and actually had a very good time. Yes. It was, it didn't feel like work, yes. you know, and that's the wonderful thing about the mayor and uh, First Lady Lowe when they allow me to come here and be me and then they're, they're happy with me being me. So it was just a wonderful event. And I mean, the fundamental purpose is to raise money for the scholarships for some of the children that, you know, otherwise may not have the opportunities to go to college. I don't know if you remember a long time ago when the UNCF used to have this uh, commercial and they had Leotine Price singing, we're not asking for a handout, just a hand. And so that, that was uh, inspirational to me because I said I never wanted to be in that position to where I had to decide whether or not I could go to college because of finances. And my father and my mother made sure of that. So, I mean, I was one of the blessed ones who was able to do that. But, you know, there are a lot of kids that don't get that opportunity. So that's why this is just that much more important to me, especially with two kids in college now. And I can understand yes. the financial strain that it can be on uh, one or, or both sets of parents. So it, it's, um, it's more than just a mission. It's a ministry. Absolutely. I totally agree with you about that. And I love it how the young people are already starting to pay it forward. Oh, my goodness. To see a young lady that had received an actual uh, scholarship from uh, the efforts of Mayor and First Lady Lowe to now uh, she's going for her master's in yeah, nursing and she's a registered nurse yeah, now yeah. And, and, and at a very you know relatively young age still in her 20s and and now has an, an amazing career ahead of her and then to see another young man that you know, Mayor Lowe, it was very heartwarming when he said that Mayor Lowe is the person that showed him how yeah. to tie his tie. And you went from wow. that to now him being an attorney mm -hmm. and being a clerk to a federal judge wow. on his second assignment coming up. Come on. Only from the generosity of people yeah. that were giving to, you know, the mayor's, you know, Phoenix City or the positively Phoenix City yes. uh, um, Mayor's Ball uh, campaign for the, the the scholarship funds. I mean, it's just amazing to see the fruit of your labor. Absolutely. You know, and to see, you know, dreams of others yes. and unselfishly giving to them mm -hmm. to see it come to full fruition. Oh, so it, it was an amazing thing to see, you know, the fruit of the labor tonight. Well, we appreciate you as well because you always come and you always bring inspiration with you. And I am forever grateful for you because mm -hmm. you, um, through a just a simple interview, mm -hmm. you inspired me as well, oh, right? more than you ever realized. Wow. And so I just want to thank you for keep you keep coming back oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you keep coming back and we look for you the well, young people look for you well, well one of the things about the phoenix city and the columbus area is that not only just being received in such a loving way but there is a spirit that is in both of the cities that needs to be broken and the stereotype and the the 
the title that they try to put on both of the cities. I know there, there has been you know, said that there's a spirit of hopelessness and a spirit of, of you know, just not wanting to do or, or to become the full potential of what God has intended for each person for, from here to, to have. And then we have a military town and there's a, a spirit of depression from people that are away from their loved ones and people that have seen so much in war and things like that. So we have to be able to pray our way out of that. We have to pray that that spirit away from this city, from Phoenix City as well as Columbus, and just basically have people that to have some hope. One of the things that President Obama ran on was the audacity of hope. Can you imagine, you know, you have the audacity, audacity to want to hope for something better for yourself. So that in itself, you know, really, you know, spoke volumes to me. And I feel that same spirit needs to be right here in Phoenix City as well as in Columbus, Georgia. You said it so well. And, and we can close out with that, with this part of this interview, because Mayor Eddie Lowe and Lady Deborah Lowe had hope for the future. And that's why we're nine years in wow. of nine blessing years. other young people. In the uh, midst of a pandemic, on, in the midst of war breaking out in other parts yes. of the world and affecting us in the midst of this incredibly high gas prices, that you still had a full house of people because the sold greatest out. thing sold out the, the and like i said from from the uh, i was almost about to say the book board but uh, from the podium it it was like you don't understand that the greatest gift to our fellow man is the act of giving and giving prolongs your life it it helps you to have not only just the the, the opportunity to give, but the opportunity to feel and, and receive the favor of God over your life once you do understand that, you know, the greatest of these people that are, are maybe the people that are homeless, maybe the people that, are, you know, disenfranchised, may not be financially able to do what they would like to do, but because of our gifting. You know, because the greatest gift that the world has ever experienced was the gift of the Father given of His Son. Wow. So now we have the opportunity to, to emulate and imitate that same type of gifting that God gave to the world through Jesus Christ. So that's why we have to be able to emulate Him and to be able to see Him again. We have to be those living epistles of being able to go out and live to give because I promise you, it will help you to have a longer life on this earth and then even the promise of everlasting life. And the community say amen to that. <laughs> he has, we, he done said it all. <laughs> We're going to close out with that, an inspiring message from actor Palmer Williams Jr. I mean, the man is very committed, but you have seen the side that many of us have connected with and that's why he keep coming back and i love what phoenix city is doing in this tri-city community so pass it on yes pass it on i'm, I'm gonna tell you one thing about this you definitely have to instill and invest in these younger people because can you imagine if they had nothing to look forward to no type of future no type of hope what would happen because we're only able to build upon the future and our children are our future. I know it sounds corny, you know, you know, I believe the children are our future. Teach them well and let them lead the way. Show them all the beauty they possess inside. Give them a sense of pride to make it easier. Let the children's laughter remind us how it used to be for us. So, you know, those words still resonate presently. So don't take it lightly, the amount of importance it takes. You know, and I'm going to break it down real. Would you rather these kids go to college or break into your house? I'm going to leave that right there. All right. You heard him. Awesome. You've been watching here on cable TV.